Every time a civilization reaches the pinnacle of its decadence, we return to restore the balance. Gotham isn't beyond saving. Give me more time. There are good people here. You are defending a city so corrupt we have infiltrated every level of its infrastructure. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. You know, we are in a very polarized comic book industry, a very polarized entertainment industry. We're in a very polarized culture, very polarized world. Feels like everybody's, you know, moving opposite directions. And then that the, the opinions themselves have gotten more hyperbolic and polarized. You see somebody, you know, would, uh, I'll talk about X Factor, which is one of the worst modern comics that you're going to see from Marvel. Absolutely atrocious. You don't believe me? Go pick up a you know, copy of that or even the Child Magneto, which is basically X Factor, but with a new name on it. It's absolutely trash. There are people out there just because, I guess, it, uh, it placates or it's giving a story that they think needs to be out there. They will proclaim that this is one of the greatest comic books that's ever been written. Perhaps the greatest X-Men book ever. The greatest series. is like, this is horseshit. You know, this, you can't, you know, uh, you know, Art is subjective. I get that. That's, that is subjectively bad, and it's certainly objectively worse than anything Chris Claremont ever did. But people will say that stuff knowing that essentially they're lying, that they're, maybe they're going too far. But you get the opposite end of the spectrum. Sometimes um, I see it here in the in the comment section where people are like, fuck it, just time to let Marvel and DC die. And I get, I, I get the idea or the sentiment behind it. Things aren't exactly growing great at Marvel and DC. From my perspective, there are people that up there that are absolutely loving everything going at Marvel and DC, and I do not, um, I do not want to take that away from you. I'm glad that you're enjoying something that I'm not. But I think there's a lot of people that really don't like the direction at Marvel and DC right now, and it's a lot of things. It's um, you know the story craft has definitely degraded quite a bit over the years. You read a comic book, you're not even getting a story anymore. You're getting, you know, one ninth of a story. You know, was I've been isn't Chris Catwell? He's like on issue twelve. He hasn't told a story yet. He hasn't finished it at least. You know, you're on the the tw at least the twelfth part of a story. It's crazy that uh, a periodic comic that comes out monthly would slow roll these things like that and not provide any resolution in the meantime. So I think uh, you know the enjoyment of reading the comics as they're being delivered in the Western comic industry. I'm going to talk mostly about Marvel and DC here, shockingly. You know, is is become less enjoyable due to the way that the comic books are written. Now you do have once in a while you get something like a, a Shadow Man from Valiant. It's like holy crap! You know, there's a beginning, middle, and end to each issue. There's like a little adventure. And there's a conflict, and there's a resolu resolution that, that happens within the issue, and then it moves on to whatever, you know, there's some subplots that are bigger things going on. And that was uh, that was really surprising. Even in the Arkham City Order of the World, which I'll talk about later today with my good friend Josh McDonald, I was shocked at the second issue. There's a bad guy. There's a resolution. Uh, I was surprised by the end of it. I was like, hey, this felt like a real comic book. Well, you just don't get that very often. It's not only just the bad story craft, it's um, the lack of subtlety when it comes to social issues, uh, political issues being jammed into comic books. They've always been there. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've been there sometimes. I'll give you that, but they've never been quite like they are now. Everything's a propaganda pamphlet. I see all this stuff on the news. It's already, I can't escape this stuff in the Philippines, right? You, you're like, hey, at least West. Wes got out of, out of America. He's in the Philippines, you know, as an expat. At least he doesn't have to listen to all this uh, this crap that's going on in, in the culture right now in America. Nah, I don't get it as bad as y'all, but I still get it. You can't escape this stuff. So you, you certainly can't escape it in the, the pages of DC and Marvel Comics. You buy three or four new Marvel Comics in a week or DC Comics in a week, you're going to get you know least, that and at least half of it. And it's going to be very overt. It's going to be over the top and, and right on your head. And people are tired of that shit. I get it. And, uh, you know, they're constantly making the characters look like shit nowadays, you know, kind of kneecapping the heroes to bring them down to our level. I'll certainly talk about that as we're elevating the 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 uh, the villains, not on a like a strength level, but on a virtue level to the to the status of the heroes. Where you're like, who am I supposed to be rooting for here? This is, you know, this isn't um, this isn't enjoyable 
anymore. Like, I know one of these characters is evil, and you're presenting them as, you know, pretty much on the same level as the hero. All that stuff gets it's crazy, and people are like, fuck it, let him die. We will be in a better place. If I'm, and I don't believe in my, I don't, everything I'm looking at, I don't see anything that says Marvel and DC are shutting down in the next 12 months. But it's certainly, if you think about it, we might be closer to one or even both of them, maybe going to reprints or uh, licensing out some of the products, not too distant future. They've done it here and there in small doses, but hey, I don't see why they wouldn't. It's not like they're bringing an autonomy. They're not losing money, but they're not making a lot of money, right? They are bringing a lot of headaches for their parent companies with all the stupid uh, decisions going on at Marvel and DC. You think the 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 people in the accounting office up at AT and T and and Disney don't notice this crap? That it's uh, bringing you know making it harder to sell these products, sell sell these characters. Obviously, they know that. So I get it. Just let them die. Fuck. They haven't learned. We've been going this through the, through this stuff for like nearly a decade now. DC is, you know, trying to overtake Marvel in the arms race for uh, you know which which comic publisher could be more insufferable the way that they present their characters and stories. And, you know, it reminds me of uh, what is it? Batman Begins, Ra's al Ghul, in the League of Shadows. It's time to burn Gotham to the ground because it can't be saved. It's too corrupt. It's too far gone. You know, the, the cancer is, is too far in there. There's no treatment left other than burning it to the ground and raising something up in its in its place. I'm personally not the Ra's al Ghul like mindset and all this thing. I still think these things can be salvaged. And I think there will be eventually somebody has to come in here and be like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, well, are we insane? Are, are we trying to lose ourselves money? Are we trying to make these characters less valuable? Are we trying to run our customers off? It certainly feels that way. And there's going to be some type of voice of sanity to bring some type of reason into these publishers that say, yes, we can do these little things, these things that, um, you know, maybe target new audiences and see if we can we can grow that way. But we don't have to do it at the expense of everybody else. So I'm a, I'm the Christian Bale Batman in the situation. I don't think that Marvel and DC need to die for the comic book industry to get better. I do think they need to acknowledge their issues and and start cleaning house and, and fixing some of these things before you know. Obviously, eventually it does get too far. You say, Wes, how far is too far? I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> That's all I can say. I don't know. I don't know how how far can this stuff go. How much worse do you really think Marvel and DC can get at this point? It can't be that much worse, right? It might be in, it might be in naive. I am being naive. I know it, but uh, I still hold out hope. I still believe, even in the shitty you know version of Marvel and DC that we have now, that they do provide purpose. They do. There are there are good things being offered to the comic book uh, community. Perhaps not to the readers. <laughs> you know, that doesn't feel like they're servicing the readers very much, but that certainly offers something to the creative community. And, you know, historically, it's very difficult for creative people to really make money. The creatives that make money make a lot of money, but the rest of them typically, they're just kind of like left out. You know, they, they for being a bunch of socialists, they don't like you know, sharing their own profits among each other. You know what I mean? You don't see, uh, I, I'm not going to name any names, be a dickhead about it, but you, know, you don't see these guys be like, you know what? That book you wrote was better than mine. I'm going to give you half my profits. You know what I mean? You deserve it for the effort. That stuff doesn't happen. So you got the, like the super upper crust of creatives and then everybody else is sitting there wanting to get up there. And at least DC and Marvel provide an initial destination. I don't believe that Marvel and DC are the, the final destination for, for serious comic book creators that want to go and use them as a platform to do the Mark Miller, to do the Todd McFarlane, to do the James Tynan, to where you go to the Marvel or DC, you get on a character like a fucking Spider-Man or a Batman or uh, you know Mark Miller's case, you do a Civil War and stuff like that, you really raise your profile, and then you say, 
I got fuck you money. I don't need you guys. I'm going to go on and do my Netflix deal. Or I'm, I'm Todd McFarlane. I'm going to make the world's coolest toy line. Or James Tiny is like, hey, yeah, I got this uh, Substack grant. And I'm going to go bet on myself. I don't need you guys anymore. Thanks for the time on Batman. I don't think it's going to be remembered well, but that's not the point of this video. <laughs> so Marvel and DC do at least provide that, right? Hey, Ed, if you want to say the glass is half full, half empty kind of a, a situation, a lot of these comic books today, they'll make they'll make some some of the more nondescript you know, comic runs that you forgot about in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. You go back and read it and be like, I don't know how this isn't a classic because based on what I've reading today and Chris Cantwell's fucking Iron Man, this thing, you know, this is some Alan Moore shit right here. What am I reading? <laughs> so, you know, it does make the, the older comic books look a lot better because the craft was so much better. The, the, um, I don't know, the love of the characters, the love of the universe, the love of the fans is just really apparent. In a lot of those uh, comic books, you could see a lot of those creators, when they're writing those stories and even if they weren't heralded, you know, like uh, some of the bigger runs that you get, but you could see a lot of those creators were probably doing the thing that they had been dreaming of their entire life. You know what I mean? And that's like really cool. You don't get that so much today. I think uh, a lot of the creators that you see them, they're, they're doing the thing that they think they need to do so they can go do the thing that they really want to do with, you know, that they've wanted to do since they were kids. Hope that wasn't too confusing. So you do get that. It the new modern comics, if you read a few of them, they're gonna make you going through those dollar bids. You're a much happier customer. Does make those stories look a lot better? And it does provide a level of stability for creators who are looking to, you know, use a Batman, a Spider-Man, a Justice League, or uh, you know, Hulk, whatever character it is that they get on, they make a name for themselves boost a profile, or maybe they get to move on and go do their own thing. They don't have to worry about DC and Marvel anymore. They don't have to worry about the lack of editorial talent or worry about the fact that they seem to have lost all interest in developing talent and um, in keeping, you know, cool shared universe. Now, that doesn't really, uh, you know, doesn't improve the reading experiences, but it does provide something. So I don't think it's, it's we, we shouldn't let it die yet. You know, at least you know, uh, you know, it's it's allowing some people to get out there, make a name for themselves, and really get to go do something that they really enjoy. Unfortunately, you could just tell a vast, vast majority of comic book uh, right, or writers, especially the writers. I don't know about the art. I think a lot of the artists um, probably love the medium uh, uh, quite a bit, but you could tell a lot of the writers. They just, you know what I mean? Zero fucks given kind of thing. Oh, uh, what, what can I do with this this character to to uh, to tell this story that I've always wanted to tell that has nothing to do with superheroes? It doesn't really fit into into the uh, lore or the history of the character. Let me do that part. You, know, you just you don't get all that much, but uh, it's it's not hopeless. This is what I'm saying. Stop talking to me like that. I'm not a bad man. There's still hope for Marvel and DC. Jim Shooter could get hired at Marvel tomorrow. Turn things right around. He loves the character. Peter J. Tomasi could be, you know, they could bring him as the front man at DC Comics. Be like, you know what? You're going to approve all, you know, all major storylines and you're going to be like the, the character continuity guy. Make sure that, that people aren't fucking up our characters, make them less valuable. That could happen. It's not going to happen, but it could happen. There's still hope left. Kind of. I did just, that, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying, guys, is I don't think Marvel and DC are ready to die yet. Or are they? I don't know. I feel like I made a pretty damn good case that maybe they should be dead. I'm kidding myself is what it is. Am I coming to a sense of realization right here in the middle of the stupid recording? Where I said so the best thing you could say about comic books today is people are getting paid and that's going to allow them to go do work other places as they're destroying our characters. And it makes the old stuff that you get in the dollar bins much more enjoyable. You guys are right. Fuck it. Let them die. You're, you're probably right. I, I got nothing. I, you know, I'm hopeful, but it's, you know, it's it's one of those uh, hope in one hand and shit in the other. See what fills up for us? I'm coming to the realization. This is awful. This video is a bust. I was not able to back up even what I wanted to say here. This doesn't happen very often. <laughs> 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.